Donald Trump just finished up his speech in Michigan today. He finally left Mar-a-Lago, stopped playing golf for a day to get out there and campaign. And honestly, he should have stayed home because <laughs> this rally was terrible. It was a disaster. The speech was really bad. It was full of lies, conspiracies, the usual nonsense that comes from a Donald Trump event. So I have some clips from this speech to show you, and we'll talk about them a little bit. But the first clip I want to show you is Donald Trump getting confused by Kamala Harris's name. He just doesn't understand it, I guess. Just take a look. And nobody, nobody really knows her. They, they were doing something, the man on the street, they said, you know Harris? Everyone's saying, who the hell is Harris? Nobody knows who Harris is. What's the vice president's name? They have no idea what the name is. Now, the name Kamala is it's a little complex. There's about 19 different ways of pronouncing it, right? But Kamala is, uh, at least it's a name you sort of remember. You can't use Harris because nobody knows who the hell Harris is. Who's Harris? We want somebody they know. And, you know, one of the reasons they don't know, she did a lousy job. She was cons Wow. <laughs> So yeah, in that 30 second clip right there, Donald Trump said two things. One, that there are 19 different ways to pronounce Kamala Harris's name. And then two, that nobody knows her name. What? What? So first and foremost, with the pronunciation of the name, this is a really gross and disrespectful attack that Republicans have launched against Kamala Harris recently. Like they deliberately mispronounce her name just to be disrespectful just to just to be rude that's what it's all about and, and I, I think it speaks such volumes to what the republicans are and who they are these days and what they're about you know they they can't critique her on policy so they make fun of her name i mean it really feels like we're on the middle school playground when dealing with republicans you have these democrats who are adults they're just trying to get things done trying to work for the american people and then on the other side of the aisle, you have kids playing with like blocks over there on the Republican side, you know, making fun of people's names. It's the most childish, disrespectful garbage that Republicans have, but it's all they have. They have no attacks on Kamala Harris, so they have to go with stuff like this. And then the second point of like, nobody knows Harris's name. That sounds like a you problem, buddy. <laughs> you know, I don't know. It sounds like a Trump problem. I think everybody else in the United States who is decently informed who knows what's going on, obviously knows Kamala Harris's name. They know, when you say, who is the vice president, your average American is going to say Kamala Harris. But I guess Donald Trump doesn't think that's the case, and he thinks that the name Harris is, like, unknown. What planet is this guy living on? I mean, genuinely, when he says this stuff, do you think that he's like, oh, yeah, I just made a really good point? Or do you think he's not thinking at all? Like, is he delusional or just unintelligent or both? I think both are equally as likely. So I just thought that clip was so weird, so strange, but that's as expected from a Trump speech these days. The next clip I want to show you is Donald Trump with a straight face claiming that he's been treated worse than any president before him in American history. And the, the crowd applauded it. Seriously, take a look. And that's the least of it. Nobody. They always say that, uh, I don't know if you know, Lincoln was horribly treated. Uh, Jefferson was pretty horribly. Andrew Jackson, they say, was the worst of all, that he was treated worse than any other president. And I said, do that study again, because I think there's nobody close <laughs> to Trump. I even got shot. And who the hell knows where that came from, right? No. This line is always such a weird one from Donald Trump. Like, he must be the center of attention at all times. He always must be the victim. And that's what he's doing right here. He's victimizing himself. He's saying, well, I've been treated so badly. Really? Really? You know, prosecutors holding him accountable, the Department of Justice holding him accountable, private citizens holding him accountable means he's been treated badly. Like, he's broken the law, both criminally and civilly, and he was held accountable for breaking the law. But apparently, apparently, that's as bad as Lincoln being shot and killed, as JFK being shot and killed, as Reagan being shot. I mean, what are we doing? It's such a, it's such a weird claim 
that so frequently comes from Donald Trump. And as I mentioned, it truly is uh, meant to put him at the center of attention. When Donald Trump is not the center of attention, he freaks out and he goes more extreme. That's why we're seeing him go so crazy recently. But that's what this claim is meant to do. It's meant to inflame and give him the attention that he so desires uh, and give him the applause that he desires and make him feel loved by his MAGA cult. It's so weird. It's so weird. I don't know how anybody willingly watches a Trump rally, just sits there for like an hour and a half and listens to this man ramble on and on and on about utter nonsense about utter nonsense. I would never, I really genuinely would never watch an entire Trump rally uh, because it's like watching paint dry uh, if you had someone screaming your ear the entire time. That's what it reminds me of. So <laughs> anyway, the next clip I want to show you and the final real clip I want to show you is Donald Trump doubling down on his remark that he made recently that is incredibly disrespectful to our veterans and our service members. So take a look. I always say there are two awards is the Medal of Honor and oftentimes is posthumously where, you know, they're, they're not there. Oftentimes they've died in battle and they're getting the award. And then you have the civilian version, the presidential medal. And I always say I'd rather get the presidential medal because the guys that came in, other than you and a few others, oftentimes they've suffered greatly, right? They've suffered greatly or they're not around. But it's our highest award, and it's an honor to have you here, and I'm very proud that I was able to give you the award. Thanks, James. Yeah, so this is like a new line for Donald Trump as well that he's used many times recently in, in speeches where he's saying, you know, I'd rather get the Presidential Medal of Freedom than the Congressional Medal of Honor. The Presidential Medal of Freedom can be given uh, by a president to anybody, whereas the Congressional Medal of Honor is given to people who go above and beyond to serve their country, maybe even die to serve their country. And Donald Trump tries to equate them, saying, oh, I'd rather have this medal than that one, because if you get the Congressional Medal, you're all mangled. Maybe you died. Maybe you lost a limb or something like that. I don't want that. I want to get the, the Presidential Medal of Freedom because I don't have to do anything for it. It's so disrespectful. And this comes just a couple days after a member of Donald Trump's campaign staff assaulted an official, a cemetery employee at Arlington National Cemetery when they tried to prevent him and his campaign from taking photos and videos uh, of a restricted area at the cemetery. So you have Donald Trump disrespecting uh, Congressional Medal of Honor recipients while his campaign is currently dealing with the fact that somebody on his campaign assaulted somebody working at a, a, a veterans and service members cemetery. That's the Trump campaign. They do not like service members. Again, reminder, Donald Trump said that fallen American soldiers are losers and suckers. They do not like service members. They don't like veterans. They don't want you know, to care for them and pass policy that helps them. That's the Trump campaign. Now, the final clip I want to show you, the real final clip is just a funny one. Fox News got so sick of Donald Trump's speech that they cut away from it. Even Fox News is like, yeah, I've had enough. I'm throwing in the towel. Take a look. Like we're going to make our country great again. Donald Trump hammering Kamala Under Harris Kamala, on the economy while holding a rally in Battleground, Michigan. Hello, everyone. I'm Judge Jeanine Pirro. <laughs> yeah. When Fox News is cutting off Donald Trump, you know it's bad. They cut off their cult leader's speech to go to Janine Pirro's show. <laughs> That's how you know this Trump speech was bad. That's how you know a Trump event is bad when even Fox News is like, my God, can we cut this? Please. He's he is truly his own worst enemy, and Fox News knows it. So they're like, please don't let listen pe don't let people listen to him any longer. Please cut the feed. Cut it because we can't let this bumbling fool continue to talk and push his own voters away. That's what Donald Trump does every time he takes the stage at one of these events. So a really terrible group of clips, huh? I mean, you know, that's a Trump speech. They're terrible. They're awful. They're conspiratorial. But we know that by now, of course. So anyway, I just wanted to show you these clips from Trump's rally today or speech, whatever it was. It's just awful, really, really terrible stuff. Um, but I'll leave the video there. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here. Make sure to subscribe down below. It goes an incredibly long way. Also drop a like on the video and comment. Let me know what you think about all this. 
And as I always say, I greatly appreciate you and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day.